And here are your notes for 7.9 on scale changes. Um, using our function f of x equals 2x, we have to do the scale change that is described here. And we did the scale changes in unit 4 for linear. We did them again in unit 5 for quadratics. So hopefully this kind of feels like a review. The scale change part is this rule right here, y equals f of x minus 3. So all we have to do is do this rule on f of x. So what we're going to do is wherever we see f of x, we are going to replace it with 2 to the x. Because they are equal. So I'm going to put 2 to the x in right there. And it will be y equals 2 to the x minus 3. That's it for part A. Now you can see that um, from this negative 3, that this function is shifted down three units. Shifted now three units. So we are going to put our horizontal asymptote down three units from y equals zero at y equals negative three. So now we're working in part B, which is to graph our equation from part A. So I'm going to take my parent, which is 2 to the x, and get a parent graph. So x and 2 to the x for a parent table. So I'm going to use my usual suspect. Okay, I know that 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. Um, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is negative I'm just kidding, is 1 over 4, not negative anything is positive. Okay, if you want more practice with that, you need to look at notes 7.2 on shifts. Okay, that'll go through how to make that table in depth. So now I'm going to plot these points from my fake origin because I want the whole parent shifted down three units. So I'm doing 0, 1 from my origin, 1, 2 from my fake origin. 2, 4 from my fake origin, okay, just like this. So if my parent is just shifted down three units, and then it's done. Okay, now we're looking at example number two. So this time they're giving us a graph, f of x, and they're making us write an equation for it. So we want to make sure that we're calling the graph f of x, the equation f of x. That's its name. We can't call it y because y is down here. We don't want to confuse Fred and Yolanda. They are different things. Fred is the name of this function. Yolanda is the scale change that we are going to perform on Fred. Okay, so now we have to find some pretty points because we need our d, b, and a to write an equation. Look at this. Our asymptote is y equals 0. So our d value is 0. Then I'm going to use my points. I've got uh, 0, 1. And I've got 1, 4. So my r is 4. I'm multiplying by 4. And the r is also the base. So my base is 4. And my a is coming from my y-intercept. So the 1 is my a. So now I can write an equation. It'll be 1 times 4 to the x. Now 1 times 4 to the x is just 4 to the x, so I don't need that times 1 right there. Okay, now I have something that's equal to f of x. I'm going to replace f of x with 4 to the x right here. So it's going to be y equals negative 3 times 4 to the x. Oops. Plus 1. And I'm finished. Okay. Let's try another one. This one will have a little bit more simplifying to do. So let's start by writing the equation for f of x to match this graph. So my asymptote is y equals 0. So that's my d value. Okay, then I'm going to make a table. So I've got 
these two pretty points, I've got negative one six and I've got zero three. So going from six to three, I'm multiplying by one half. That is my base, my B. And then the three in the y-intercept is my A. So f of x equals three times one half to the x. Okay, now I'm going to plug that in wherever I see f of x. So it's gonna look like y equals negative two times that whole thing, take away six. So that whole thing goes in there. It's gonna be three times one half to the x. Okay, when I simplify this, I multiply my coefficients the negative two and the three. I do not multiply the negative two with my base. I keep the base, keep the base. Okay, so it's gonna be y equals negative six times one half to the x minus six. Okay, we're gonna do one more scale change and then I going to show you um, something sneaky that we did in the warm-up that we need to talk about because it's not in the video. Okay, um, we're going to do number six because this one's a growth. We did a decay, now we're going to do a growth. Okay, my asymptote is y equals zero, so that is my d. Okay, I make a table using my pretty points. Yikes. Well, that's not a pretty point. It's got to be this one. Okay. Yeah. So that is the point zero, three, and that is the point one, nine. So to go from three to nine, I'm multiplying by three, which is my base, and then my a value is also three. So for f of x, we have three times three to the x. Now I have to plug that in for f of x, wherever I see f of x. So I'm plugging this in. So it'll be y equals negative four times something plus five. So I'm plugging in my three times three to the x. And then I have to multiply my coefficients. So that is y equals negative 12 times three to the x. Plus five. Now we're done. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know for scale changes. Um, now we are going to do a problem from a warm up. We're just going to talk about it. Uh, if you can do it on a separate sheet of paper, that would be awesome. Um, what I want to talk to you about is this problem right here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. So this looks like it would be the point one eight. And this looks like the point, it would be two sixteen. Okay, but this is not just eight and sixteen packed accounts, it's in hundreds. Okay, so there's a school net problem that's gonna try to mess you up like this. So it's not eight, it's eight hundred. It's not 16, it's 1,600. So when you work backwards to find that y-intercept, it's going to be 400. Okay? That's all I really needed to say. Just be really careful when you're reading a graph that you read the stuff in parentheses because they are legit trying to mess you up. 
math teachers remember are a little bit evil. <laughs>